All right, so check this out. Inside of here is the brand new DJI Osmo Pocket 2. If we pull it out, it actually looks a lot like the original Osmo Pocket. Now, when the original Pocket came out, I really loved the concept of it. But I think there was three major reasons why I didn't fall in love with it and use it regularly. <laughs> There's bugs everywhere. I came out here because I thought it would be beautiful and there's just flies like bzzz, all up in my face. Now the good news is that this Pocket 2 addresses all those things and we are gonna be doing a giveaway with this because we have Storyblock sponsoring today's video and these bugs are driving me insane! Carrie, how are you dealing with all these bugs? What bugs? What Maybe it's you. What? They're flying all around you. You must smell funny. Can you see? There's like five in front of my face. Do I stink? Be honest. No. Maybe they're just feeling like sushi and Japanese cuisine. <laughs> Carrie thinks I should try washing my face and maybe they'll stop stalking me. But let's go ahead and fire this up and see how the image out of here looks while I tell you about our sponsor, Storybox. Now I'm sure by now you already know that Storybox is the place to go get access to over a million stock videos, photos, music, sound effects, templates, all that good stuff. And the best part, you have access to all of that using their affordable, unlimited, all access subscription plan. It's a great value, but it gets even better because now with that subscription, you have access to Maker, which is an online video editor. It's super basic, super easy to use. So if you've never edited video before, you can hop right in and get a video made without ever even downloading software onto your computer. It gives you templates you can start with, upload your own clips, and easily pull in clips from the Storyblocks library. So get your videos done on time and on budget using Storyblocks links in description. Thank you so much for Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Can you see the fly just chilling on my head? What are you doing on my forehead? Seriously, I feel like the longer we stay here, the more the bugs accumulate. They're so worse. we should yeah. probably get to a different spot. But anyways, what'd you guys think of how some of the first shots out of this Pocket 2 came out? I think it looks pretty decent, especially when you consider that this was a pretty rough dynamic rain situation. I was half in the shadow, half in the sun. And I did shoot in d like by the way. So the flatter color profile File. That gives me access to a little bit more dynamic range a little bit and I just added a little bit of a color grade to it And it's not terrible, right? We did shoot some stuff last night with better lighting during golden hour and oh man it looked good. One of the first things I was excited to hear was that this one does have a slightly larger sensor, one over 1.7 inch sensor, opposed to the previous one, which was one over 2.3. Also, the new lens is an f1.8 rather than an f2.0. So slightly faster lens and a slightly larger sensor. So in theory, this should give us just an overall better image, also be better in low light. And that seems to be the case. This is a pretty good looking image when you consider it's coming out of something this small. Now, I want to start off by talking about what I consider to be my favorite feature, which is the wider field of view. So right now, this camera right here is 16 millimeter, and I love this range because I can hold it out, and it's still wide enough to kind of get a nice medium close-up shot. The problem with the previous one was that it was around a 26-ish, so you can still vlog in this range. It is a bit tighter, and you also have to have your arm all the way extended out. If you bring it in a little bit closer, then it's really close. Now the beauty of the Pocket 2 is now it comes standard at around 20 millimeters, something like this. Here, let me just show you on here. So there we go, right here. And this is a pretty comfortable vlogging range. And also, what do you guys think of the sound quality? Not bad, right? There are four microphones built into here. So I'm not using any external microphones or anything like that. Now the previous one had a microphone pointed towards the selfie direction. So if I was vlogging, it would sound okay. But let's say you want to face the camera away from you and all of a sudden the audio on this side wouldn't sound so good but this with its four microphones it's got you covered so love that now this 20 mil is great and all but i feel like the sweet spot is right there around 15 to 16 millimeter that's what i usually like to vlog with with my larger cameras and this is an accessory that I can slap on here. And now I'm getting closer to 15 millimeter. So this is the range I love living at. 15 to 16 mil, I can get a nice medium wide shot. I can also show other things in the frame and not just have a close up of my face. And I love it. It's a combination of being magnetic, but also you can press it a little bit harder and it just snaps in. So not only is it magnetic, but also has a little bit of extra security as well. I just noticed something. It must know that this lens is on here when I shut it off, check it out, it shoots the lens out this way, which makes sense, right? Since this lens is too big, it can't fold in on itself like that. But then you take it off and do the same thing. See, look, the lens goes this way. So 
it knows somehow when this lens is on here. I get excited about these little things sometimes. I feel like I gotta figure this out. Also, they told me it's a one second boot up time, which is great considering it's a gimbal. So let's go ahead, turn it on and ready to shoot now. Oh yeah, that's not bad. Now this wide angle lens is something that comes with the creator combo and that's what I unboxed. Now you could just get the pocket two by itself if you want, but I definitely think this combo is worth a look because some of the accessories it comes with is super cool. And really it's what makes this so unique. So once we get everything out of the box, we end up with this case right here. And I think this is really well thought out. Of course, this is the case for your gimbal itself. But if you look inside here, we have our ultra wide angle. We also have our lightning adapter and our USB-C. So just like before, we can attach our adapter and hook it up to our phone like that. And it's so much more pleasant having a big old screen to work with a post out looking at this little thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a box around carry. So now active track has engaged. So no matter where I move this camera, it should track with carry. Now, right now the autofocus seems to be working pretty decent, right? So let me try focusing on my hand, pretty good. I'm gonna turn it around, get it on my face face and that's looking pretty good here. You can see all the flies just like hovering around my face as usual. Hey, get off my eyelid. And it's actually kind of crazy because we have a little bit of a shallow depth of field. The background's a little bit blurry. The autofocus hasn't been perfect. You might've noticed a little bit of hunting there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and assume that that is because this is an early version of the firmware and this is a prototype. All right, so quick note from the future. I did just talk to DJI about the autofocus in this thing. They are aware of it and it's one of the big biggest things they're gonna be updating in the upcoming firmware update. So this video isn't a great representation of the autofocus capabilities of this. They have been really good in the past on improving their cameras with firmware updates. You know, when the original Pocket came out, the autofocus was pretty bad, but they definitely fixed that and now it's great. So I'm definitely looking forward to the finalized firmware on here. Hopefully the autofocus is gonna be amazing and we will test that at a later date. All right, back to the past. But the coolest thing that comes with the creator combo right up here, this is a wireless microphone. So this right here is in its basic form, right? So I can go ahead, take off the bottom. We can attach this bottom here, which slightly extends it out, but then we have a quarter inch right here for the little tripod. But this right here, I think they call it the do it all grip. So this does extend out the grip a little bit. It gives you a 3.5 mil right there. It relocates your USB-C right there. It also gives you a speaker because the original pocket doesn't have a speaker and neither does this one in its compact form. But this is also the wireless receiver for this wireless microphone. So I could go ahead, turn this on. And it's actually been pretty good about just auto connecting. See there, it already tells me that the mic is at 100% power. Now there is one button on here. So if I press it, the Osmo action automatically starts to record. And this is what the audio out of this wireless microphone sounds like. So that's awesome that they have a solution for getting a lavalier wirelessly attached. You don't have to have all kinds of weird things dangling off the side of it to get that wireless audio. And that's awesome. There's so many bugs. <laughs> Carrie, why don't you wear this microphone? I'm gonna go ahead and go a little bit further, see if the wireless mic still goes. I mean, realistically, with this being a wide angle, this is probably as far as you'll ever really go, right? <coughs> I swear I inhaled a bug. <sighs> Protein, you're fine. I took a deep breath and a bug went and I inhaled it. I might still be in there. Mm. Look. Shut up. I just spit it out. Shut. I felt it finally come out. Don't, don't. Are funny. you for real? I inhaled you're it. Lying. I choked and look. Oh my God, it. <laughs> Isn't that so gross? I hate nature. That's why we got the camper van. <laughs> the ultra wide angle does add a little bit of size and weight to the gimbal. So I was wondering if it affects the performance in any way. So I did a very highly scientific wind test, which is where we drove about 35 miles per hour and I stuck the gimbal out the window and it actually handled pretty well. I didn't really notice any major differences. So, so far so good. Now spec wise, this is pretty similar to the original Pocket. We have 4K up to 60 frames per second. Right now I'm shooting at 4K 24, 
but we do have some better slow-mo capabilities. Originally, we had HD 1080p at 120 frames per second. Now we have it at 240 frames per second. 240 is where everything really slows down. We do also have a little bit of a zoom, but it's not gonna be much. Let's see if we can get into one of these boats. So this is wide and we zoom in and get a slightly, slightly closer look at that boat. Now in 2.7K, we could get HDR video. So here is how it looks in HDR. And here's regular mode. Notice it actually punched out a lot. So HDR video mode must have a pretty intense crop here and there's a slight crop in slow motion nothing major i've never really been a fan of hdrs out of camera so i'm probably going to be staying out of this mode as well this regular mode is probably where i'm going to be in i'm kind of boring like that sometimes i might go into the flat picture profile so this is just straight out of camera color and this is decent alike so a lot flatter but i get a little bit more flexibility on how i want to color grade this in post another thing i noticed is that this kind of helps if you're a little self-conscious about vlogging because right now i have my phone connected to it and it looks like i'm recording something else with my phone so it looks like i'm recording that way which for some reason feels much more comfortable than pointing the camera towards yourself here let me show you so check it out i have my phone like this and i have the osmo pocket off the side of it it's extra long because i have that do it all handle on there right now i could walk around publicly pretending like i'm filming other stuff when secretly i'm filming myself with this camera <laughs> also in this case you can store this right here and check that out so there you go and also you can swivel it a little bit what makes me really excited about this pocket too is the amount of different things you can do with something that just fits into your pocket right it has a gimbal so you can get those nice stabilized shots you could also attach that ultra wide and when you connect it to your phone you could extend it out and use this wireless microphone i think there's a lot of cameras out there that fit into your pocket and can give you pretty good image quality kind of like your phone even in, right but i think this wireless microphone is one of the things that makes this really really unique and i think this might be the future of pocket sized cameras is now that we can get great images can we also just get great audio in this as well all right let me go ahead and fire this up and let's wrap this up with some comments and we're recording i'm gonna go ahead and let's switch over to this mic will it automatically detect it looks like it has. One of the things that I really like about this Pocket 2 is how simple and intuitive everything's been so far. Even setting up this microphone, it wasn't like, oh, you have to put them both into pairing mode using this complicated series of button presses and then you have to figure out how to get into it. Just, you turn it on, and it works. Sydney says, holy balls, that RSC2 is looking pretty nice. First of all, what's up, Sydney? And also, yeah, the RSC2, love that gimbal cole says let me bring my komodo over and we can try that what are you doing tomorrow bro i lived next to an airport for the majority of my life i feel your pain black magic camera slap one of them on the sc2 i will have to try that the dust on the macbook pro almost made me have a heart attack yeah <laughs> my macbook pro literally still makes crunching noises every time i open and close it it's absolutely terrible all right that's it for this video thanks for tuning in and i'll see you guys on the next one or something like that